Look at that, 396, back below four bucks a gallon. Who would have ever thought? What's up guys? Because of our little video snafu that we had that some of you pointed out, deeply apologize for that. You actually get to see three nights of the Apollo and we get to have an awesome discussion. So my name is Chad. This is the Dorky and 40 RC channel. We're going to make you faster today. So what we're going to talk about today is what is more important, your tune up, your chassis, your surface, all of it together really is what is going to give you your ET and your speed. And that is really what I've been trying to figure out for a long time now, the past couple months, we put in so much testing out at the Sam's Club surface that we race on. Great surface, good speeds, some things that are kind of out there that are kind of weird. We'll uh, show you right here. And, and competitive again. So to be competitive, we definitely need to be in the twos on a GNSS, if not the 195s. Now we've seen some 189s down through here. Show you guys the surface again. Really nice, you know, for what it is that we're able to, to play here. Anybody can play at any Sam's Club or Walmart in your local home. Problem being, the right lane here is faster than the left lane. You see where people turn in and out of. 132 foot is literally right here from where I'm standing to that light pole right there. So where people come in and out of here, there's a lot of bumps. It's a little less bumpy over here on this side. So that's the whole trick about figuring out the chassis suspension and the tune, where to bring in power, where to start power, all that kind of stuff. That's why we had to make the switch to the R1 so we have that functionality. Yes, so we did switch to the R1. So the night one video that I put up was basically, we had a race Saturday night and it was my brand new, it was literally like the first laps on the car. Uh, so I got you know knocked out of course, Played a lot with the car, figured some things out, figured out that, you know, the castle really just wasn't going to work because I don't have that tunability feature of the top end to get through those humps and everything else. Also noticed that the suspension definitely needed to be changed and lightened up. You know, Dustin released a video a couple weeks ago or maybe last week talking about, you know, things on the Apollo as far as like setups and stuff for different services. And it really resonated that, you know, I'm seeing two or three of like the fastest guys in maybe a couple states, you know, that compete and drive to Wisconsin and everywhere else, you know, and they're only running like, you know, mid to high one eights on this surface. Um, on a GNSS. So we know it's possible. So when I'm running, you know, eventually down into like the 195s, I'm not far behind. Like I'm in the game. Night one with the castle was all like two twos. Just could not get anything done. So we came home. We changed everything over to the configuration that you see here. So we put the R1 system back in. We went with the back to the 8129 gearing back here. Uh, we have. Uh, Wide reds on right now, which we were using silver voodoos. Uh, made some changes up here to the floating body mounts so the body wasn't rubbing. So just, you know, some good changes. Biggest thing though was gonna be the springs. So you can see right now we got purple in the front, red in the back. I was running silver and green, which I believe are a pound or two heavier um, in the front or in the back, you know. So we're softening everything up using uh, the 50 weight oil, the 650 CST, two hole pistons all the way around. And then I think that the next thing that we got to work on, you know, we actually got the car down um, to 199. So that's where we're at, 20199 GNSS. So over the three nights working on the actual car. And I think the next thing that we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be adding a little bit more weight to the rear. So right now, you know, we're kind of at that like, where the weight bias is kind of neutral on this car. And when you start adding, the Apollo used to be a really light car, but now when you start adding all the things like the floating body mounts, you know, she starts to get a little bit chunkier. So the whole reason why I wanted to use the castle was I thought, hey, this is a advantage because I can put this castle on here and not really take much of a weight penalty, which, you know, since you don't have all this extra crazy transmission riser stuff, just a new block in the 2023 that connects down there. Then everything is just really simple. You know, you could still get away with using the castle and in a lot of cases I would, but I just know that it's not going to work on our surface because of that tuning feature with the R1 that we need to be able to delay the turbo, bring in the turbo in a certain amount of time, that kind of stuff. 
So lightening up on the suspension for the Surface definitely made a huge improvement. That and the R1. We'll go ahead and just show you guys through some of the Night 2 footage and see what we did to actually dial this car in. It goes all right. I think we can get into the twos tonight. One nines, I don't know. Usually it's gonna take, well, it's gonna take a little bit. We've done it. So we've actually ran our fastest ET here, which was a 173, but you know, that was on a timing system and a perfect day. You know, since then, any car that I've been running here has probably been high 18s, low 19s on a timing system. So, but I guess you gotta have that GNSS time for that street cred, right? And we are doing five degrees of boost, and that is it. It's funny how you add just a couple degrees and or you add all of it in and you actually always end up going slower. So remember that, smooth is the king, guys. She went a little left on us and we're already doing better than we did last week in the two teams. So we need to straighten that up a little bit, take a look at the log and see what's going on. Two oh nine seventy three. We're getting there. The hit was definitely a little bit more under controlled. We saw that that puppy went just a little bit to the left. Now, um, you know, you take that out of there, and that might have been a sub two second run. So, not sure. I want to put more power into it this time. Actually, I think we'll just crank on the shock a couple times leave the same tune in it and see what we get a little bit. In time, one mile per hour faster. Might be as good as we're gonna get tonight. That was perfectly freaking straight. Looks like it took all that power to. Look like it. About to find out. Exact same. Man, those are always fool you. Where'd it go? 208.73. Damn. I know, they always look faster. They always look slower, but faster. All right, so I think right here is about as hard as we're gonna push it tonight. So we just turned our boost up to 25 and we're still got turbo at 10, so just a little bit of turbo. Never really need to go over 10 here because it'll, it'll just start skating. And then we put the point back up to 15. So we'll see if this will do it. That's a lot of, I've never laid down that much start power um, and boost together. So it's definitely saying something about the Apollo, how it's actually handling the start power here. So there's a, just basically trying to find that breaking point where it's, not going to handle any more of the power up front so that's what we're doing right now we'll put it on the heater and the charger and we'll go uh, we'll go another time slower 209 at 76 209 at 76 one nines. Yeah. I saw it hopping. I could see it hopping, but it was it was on a rail. Oh my God, at the exact same time. 208. How the hell did that thing run a 
I don't know, 75 miles an hour. So there you go. That was night two. We made some changes, but we definitely wanted to get faster, and it wasn't happening that night. So then we went out last night, and last night I actually ended up switching tires, uh, going to these wide reds, and I also did a uh, the modification to my body. I ended up putting on the butcher's braces on the body mount for the GTR to kind of hold everything more in place. And, uh, you know, I didn't take the camera with me, didn't want to do any of that kind of stuff. And we were able to actually crack into uh, the twos and then we cracked to a 199. And, uh, you know, it felt uh, pretty good to actually get that number after three days. Um, you know, again, it's the Apollo is definitely, you know, where it's at as far as being able to make these chassis adjustments. You know, the car was definitely going straighter now, worked out all the kinks and bugs. And now, well, we just got to figure out where to go. So there's that 199 at 76. And pretty much every run last night was like a two. You know, there's a two at 75 miles per hour that we got. And there's a 209 at 76. And really was just playing a lot with the tune, um, trying to figure things out. But again, it is really coming down to what is going on in the chassis for the particular surface. So what are we going to do now? Well, we've already changed the power system and everything else that you that we could is suspension i don't want to go any softer on the suspension so i think what we actually need to do is change the weight bias a little bit you know right now this is kind of like a 46 54 kind of car so it's kind of set up more for an actual track than a parking lot you know be able to run through some more prep you guys have raced at like you know when you're out there racing with 20 30 people you know you usually start off with a little bit more weight in the back and then maybe you can start adding weight into the front as the prep gets laid down and everything but you know where we're at that just doesn't happen so i think i need to be more in this back here so we got the brass hubs coming so we'll put the brass hubs on the back here and see how that goes. And we'll push the car until it starts to just not be able to handle any power or it starts to make willies or something like that. And then we can actually, you know, start to add a little bit of weight here to the front. Because, you know, as we all know, with the four pole battery voltage and stuff like that really doesn't matter anymore. We, you know, we're, I'm only pulling this R1 battery down to about six, 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 seven with like 50 some degrees of timing. The problem is, is we're not going anywhere with that timing. We're going slower in some cases and in some cases it's just not working. So, you know, the tune is always based on the surface, the chassis and everything else. Now we do have finally the 8400 AP max amps battery coming, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, that battery is pretty solid. Those 1050 cells that they have are just amazing. The bus bar on there, I love. And the fact is, is that the thing's got a warranty. You know, my last R1 battery did go out on me and Steve took care of me. Um, but, you know, I can't always go begging to Steve to or whatever to, to help me out, you know, when things happen, even though I know they would exchange it for anybody that had had an actual problem. If, you know, you can demonstrate that. So... But max amp is no question, you know, warranty on your batteries. And that's important. So when you're spending that much money, I have had a couple of these batteries now go out on me and I'm not going to buy the latest and greatest, you know, knuckle up and any of this kind of stuff like that. The battery flavor of the week going to go back to what's tried and true i think 8400 is the perfect size i see a lot of the fast guys running something along that range and you know we don't need this big old honking battery uh, last night a buddy of mine was running their smaller 5300 4p and he was running one you know high one eights low one nines with it because again the four pole just does not kill the battery voltage but i do think that there's a benefit kind of to like how many you know milliamps that 5300 was built with larger four uh four p cells so it actually weighs a small fraction less than the 8400 it's only like about 100 grams which 100 grams is 100 grams but you know when you're talking at almost you know a 30 percent less milliamp draw that it's capable of providing then that's not a very good trade-off so Come back and see what we actually get to do, guys. I'm excited. The weather's going to be great this weekend. The COVID symptoms are finally going away and getting back to normal here. So once we get through that, we're going to be good. 
And uh, yeah, I'm stoked about everything. We'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks a bunch and peace.